Now the last uh, topic of uh, this first, uh, I mean, first chapter in the sense of friction is something called rolling resistance and we will have to go for the belt friction. Now why I have uh, just comparing, I am not, I'm not comparing actually, I am just written the two sketches in you know, same uh, setup is, this rolling resistance is something when you roll a body on a surface. You are not rolling a body on another body. In the sense, I am not having two either uh, balls together to roll on other one. I am just having a surface alone on which a ball is placed. Or you think a round shape, either sphere or a ball is placed. And that ball is being applied with some force, say P. What happens is, when an applied force is at this, suppose, uh, total radius of this ball is r, small r, and when number 4 is applied at this end, point P here, say suppose the center of gravity of the body, the total weight of the ball is acting at this point O. I have just shown the weight is W here, but it is acting in the center of gravity at point O. What happens is, when it has to, before it starts just rolling, start rolling, this has to create a small deformation in the sense if I am having a, a say for example a, a small marble on my hand if I want it to roll on my hand when I apply a force that particular marble has to just deform deform means from the point of rest it has to just slip off slip off in the sense it will uh, you know to an uh, level of percentage, a small percentage, there will be a deformation in the total body. Each other, the friction force will be developed. But rolling is the one, it has to deform and every point in that body will keep on deforming in step by step. That is why it is rolling. Say for example, if I want to draw the sketch like this, I can show in the, you know, a dotted line that it goes like this. So depending on the surface of the body, it has to keep on deforming. So, the rolling resistance is the word. So, for any body to roll off, what is the opposed or the resistance offered by the surface? Right? The applied force is some value, say suppose P. What is the value of the resistance applied for this body is the rolling resistance. Now, here, I have just, uh, this P is applied force, you know, W is the weight of the body, total weight of the body acting in the center point of this uh, center of gravity, okay. And O is the center point, and this small r is the radius of this particular roller. You can say roller, right? And point A is the edge wherein your reaction r is supposed. To, in the sense, there is an angle formed between the surface and the reaction resultant. Sorry, resultant reaction r, which is called alpha. We have already seen what is mean by t. I mean phi. Phi is the angle between your normal reaction and the resultant force. Can you remember? That is your angle of friction. The same case here, this is alpha, it is angle for, angle of is your rolling resistance. Right? So, this alpha is between your surface of the body, I mean surface and the resultant R. And point A is where your resultant is acting. And point B is the same equal to A, but it is in the plane of this body. Okay? Now, this uh, this is a del delta symbol which indicates a deformation. So, I will write one by one. Delta is my small deformation. Small value. Just consider to be deformed. The amount to be deformed. And P is by applied force. Applied force. Okay, R is the resistance, I mean uh, normal reaction, sorry, normal reaction, okay, about point A and W is your weight, weight of the body, is it clear? Now here, we have to find out the moment for this to see that what is the rolling resistance. How do we take moment? Basically, moment means force into perpendicular distance. This we have learned from unit number 1. I hope you never forget. So, m is equal to f into 
the distance means perpendicular distance. Now here, what is the moment about point? I will take moment about point about either A or B, wherever it is. P is my applied force into, what is the distance, perpendicular distance here? O into B, is it not? P is OB, which is equal to, opposite side I have, W is my vertical moment, and this I have a distance of your AB, W into AB, okay? So this P, this OB is the one which is almost equal to this radius, because this is the value R is from center point O to point of application A, and A and B are on the same level. So P into it is R, right? The W into what is this AB actually? AB is denoted by small b. Distance between the point of your resultant um, normal reaction R and the deformation level delta. That is this point BC. That is uh, denoted by B. Fine. So this is your PR equal to WB. So we write B here will be PR by W. Small b is equal to P into R by W, which means this B is known as coefficient of rolling resistance. This small b which is equal to PR into W, B is known as coefficient of, I will write RR, rolling resistance. What is the meaning here? We have seen coefficient of friction, where which is mu, which is equal to your normal reaction, I mean uh, limiting friction Fm by normal reaction. Same case here, for rolling resistance, the, we are considering the deformation caused by the body, a small deformation. So that is height is given as your PR by W. W is your weight, P is applied force, R is the radius of the roller. So B is a small b, indicates the coefficient of rolling resistance, fine. And your rolling resistance value is, actually this R is your normal reaction acting at point A. So again R is an inclined force. In the sense R is in this fashion, you have alpha here. What we have to write? We have to they have, you know, distribute this you know, inclined force into two components, inclined and um, horizontal and vertical. So how do I write here? My horizontal will be R cos alpha, vertical will be R sin alpha. Right. So your R cos alpha is the resistance which will block the body to roll. Can you understand? So your R cos alpha is where the point is acting at point A. This will be your resistance which will block the body to roll. So I will write this R cos alpha is my rolling resistance. Fine. This is one top about rolling resistance. Based on this you will have so to just to find out, you know, two more four marks, you know, the higher uh, 15 or 60 marks question will not occur because it is just to find out your rolling resistance value or coefficient of rolling resistance. And when you come to belt friction here, basically this belt friction, before telling belt friction, something called belt drive. If you take a normal example of your, you know, flour mill where you go and, you know, uh, make the powder of your wheat uh, or etc., uh, uh, etc., et all those things. Belt drive is the one which is used for just transmitting power from one end to other end, I can say. Therein, when the contact between your belt and the your hub, that means the pulley is joined together, at that particular moment, you will have lot of resistance developed because two bodies in motion or in contact you will have resistance developed and this resistance will have lot of impact on the power output. No, I am talking about power means a transmitting power from one end to other end. When you switch out the machine, if you, you know, many of you are aware of the floor mills. What will happen actually? When you switch out the machine, the bigger pulley will transmit power to the smaller pulley, which in turn will run the machine, a mechanical machine which will, you know, make powders of your wheat or etc. Whatever it is. What actually happening is, you should have a number of small pulley, one small pulley and bigger pulley, which are driven and a driver pulley. The belt will roll over in the total body. So for example, this sketch shows, this is your roller, I mean, uh, I am sorry, the pulley, okay. I will just write this is my pull, no, pulley and this is your belt. What will happen? 
always you will have two sides, one is called slack side and this is called tight side, which means a belt cannot be very hard and tight in both the places. If it is more tight, the pulley will not move, it will get jammed. If it is more loose, in the sense it will be more slack, it will be, you know, uh, it will be going uh, in the uh, different direction. That means the proper rotation will not be there, power can be transmitted. So you need to have every tight side and slack side every now and then. Though the length of the belt is bigger or small, if it is a distance of driver pulley and driven pulley is bigger or small, but you need to have two sides of slide side, I mean slack side and tight side here. So the tension is shown as T1 and T2 here and a small elemental area is being taken here just to define uh, what is the purpose of this belt friction to find out. Again what is the uh, idea of finding here? We are finding mu only. It is again mu, right? Friction, uh, coefficient it is. Now here what I define is this small elemental area which is given this R shows is the radius rolling resistance, you know, rolling and and this is just given in a enlarged sketch here. So this is a small elemental area thickness of the belt, okay. So you have T, the tension at one side, T plus DT, DT is the small change in the thickness of the belt or addition in the thickness of the belt in the opposite side. You will have two sides of your tight side and slack side here. So this D alpha is the angle, subtended angle, it is called, I will write it is subtended angle, subtended angle, okay. Why it is written D alpha by 2? Because this is a shape of cone here. When you take the center line here, it makes a half of this angle. That is why it is D alpha by 2 in this side, again a D alpha by 2 in the opposite side. So when you add it up, it will come D alpha, is it not? The total subtended angle is D alpha. When you take half of these, the both the sides for slack side and tight side, you take half plus half, it becomes 1, D alpha, okay. And alpha is the angle which is extended for the whole body, I have written, shown it here, for total uh, pulley here. Now, what are you going to find out here? Again, you are going to apply sigma h, equation of equilibrium and sigma v to find out the values. If you add say, sigma h, what will happen? T is your value. Again, what will you do here? First step, first thing is you have to convert this inclined forces of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, forces of this T and T, D delta into two components of cos theta and sin theta. Say, suppose this T becomes T cos D alpha by 2, is it not? In the horizontal side, again T sin D alpha by 2, okay, for this T. And what about this one? T plus dt into cos alpha by 2, cos d alpha by 2, sorry, here also cos d alpha by 2, as well as T plus dt into sin d alpha by 2. This is what your conversion of the components, just inclined. Value. Inclined value is T and T plus dt, you are just converting into sin alpha by 2. Now what you have to do? Your dn is a normal reaction acting towards vertical. Df is your frictional force acting over left hand side, and uh, subtend angle is given. When you solve it, finally you will get an equation for these tensions. T1 is equal to T2, okay, into e to power mu theta, okay. Something like this. This, this is an equation of uh, tension equation. It is find out whatever it is. This final answer is the, the purpose of this belt friction is to find out the tension values and mu will be your friction, I um, mean coefficient of friction and theta is the angle subtended here, okay. So this is uh, just a, a kind of derivation, this derivation will be often asked just for a 15 marks, um, sometimes 16, sometimes 8 marks question and one or two problems will be based on this, right. So the rolling resistance is for a body to roll over the base area. I mean any area and your belt friction is for just having a slack side and tight side in the belt and this will for just for transmitting power from one end to other end wherein lot of resistance applied which will uh, you can say uh, to percent of 20 to 30 percent of this resistance will object or 
reduce the power to be transmitted from one end to other end. Right? That's what you are learning in this step. By this, uh, it will be end of this your belt friction and friction chapter. Right? So, practicing one or two problems using these formulas you know, available in the book, you will get more, uh, you know, um, uh, you will be learning more about this particular topic. But you will have to write once or twice these derivations and the diagrams so that you do not forget while writing examinations. That's right.